here I am, Lord, at your service. Here I am, Lord, in your service. I'm waiting to be. How many know that you can start out and something is guaranteed to succeed and you can abort it and make it fail? Everybody else is out and they are doing things like rehabbing houses and, 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 and profiting from the, the real estate situation. But you, you just feel that in some kind of way, if I get into it, I'm going to fail. You have in your mind failure. And you begin to birth it out to somebody else. And even when you try to say positive affirmations deep inside, there's this spirit, there's this picture that you have. And some of you can project that on the church. You won't risk. Now I told you that the benefits are a result of behavior. It's not just positive thinking. You got to act. You got to both talk and act. So if you just think that God is going to float something down out of the sky and just bless you, I don't, I don't believe that. You got to have some behavior. Remove any stinking thinking out of your life. Remove any words, negative beliefs out of your life. Be in a community where when you start talking like that, somebody's going to check you. Say, we don't talk like that here. Amen. And some of you need to be in a larger community than your husband or wife. Because how many know that you can dominate husband or wife? You need to spread your dreams out in a larger community so that they can check you and say that was an idle word that you need to get out of your thinking. And then it says raise up. The last one raise up. It says lift up a banner for the peoples. Lift up a banner. Well you know. Since Isaiah wrote 700 years before Christ. Since he moved 700 years. We already know the banner. Amen. When I was looking at this. I, 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 the song came in my mind. Lift high the cross. That's the gathering place for every person. If, if you ever want to go through the gate to everything great, no matter what the year, then you got to go through the blood. That, that's the banner. You got to lift high the cross because it's at the cross that you are washed, that you are made clean, that the stinking thinking is removed from your life. You know, it, it, how's that verse say uh, about God? It says, if we confess our sins. He is faithful and just to what? To forgive us our sins and to do what? To cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God can clean our thinking. We can be washed by the regeneration of the word. You know, Brother, Brother Michael has, has said to me, and, and he said, what is the greatest challenge to Christianity today? And I want to share it with you. I'm going to share it later, but I want to share it with you. The greatest challenge to Christianity today is what I call MP3 Sound by Christianity. MP3, sound by Christianity. And that's where people download a sound bite, whether it's from the preacher or anything else, and they use that as an end point and not a beginning point. They don't even think about it anymore. They don't investigate the word after the service. It's MP3, sound by Christianity. They use it as an end point. And you can trick your mind. You just can't trick your spirit. And if your spirit is ever out of line with your mind, then your mind will go crazy. And that's why a lot of people inside church, they, they really are not in the Lord. They've gone spiritually crazy. Because you have to reason with God and understand what God is saying. You have to go to the cross of Calvary. You got to study and understand that this plan really does work. That God didn't pick out who would be saved and who would be lost. 
And that when you come to the point and you say, if I do this, this, and this, then I'm saved and I can never be lost. No, God is going to work with your decisions, with your words, and with your actions. He's going to work with that. If you're going to go through the gate to everything great, then I fully intend to. And if you fully intend to, can we say amen? amen. Go through the gate. Then take these actions. Build up. Remove. Raise a standard. Go to the cross of Calvary. Go to the cross. Find there what God has planned for you. Amen. Find there. Find forgiveness and victory. And I'll finally say, my brothers and sisters, that one of the things that I've come to understand is that you don't need your own victories to win. That's why people watch the Redskins and get upset when they lose. Amen. Or any other team. Because the fans are part of the game. Amen. And I don't care if they watch it on direct TV or whatever it may be. The fans are part of the game. And they see their life in the players on the field. You don't need your own victory in order to have victory. You can have somebody else's victory and make that yours. That's why people root for winners and don't like losers. But if you ever want to gain the victories in life, there's somebody's victory, capital S, O-M-E, B-O-D-Y. There's somebody's victory that you can have, and that person is Jesus. Amen. He's already Hallelujah. won the victory for you. Hallelujah. Already. And you can meditate on him and have his victory inside your heart. He'll do that for you. And so if you're going to go through the gate, and I'm going to go through, then Get the actions because you're going to get the benefit of your behavior. Get ready to be blessed. Write down your goals. Get them down. Then begin to be built up to believe that God can bring to pass everything great in your life and for your life. Do you believe that? Amen. Everything great. And, and then remove all negative beliefs. You know, whenever they crop up, we just remove all negative beliefs. And you need to stay in faith. That's why you need to stay in the word. That's why you need to stay in worship. That's why you need to stay in the church. That's why you need to stay in class. You need to stay in faith. Amen. My trip to Kenya was awesome. It was the culmination of a lifetime dream of wanting to travel to Africa. It was also the, a culmination of the Jubilee 2007 goal that I had written down uh, on my strategic uh, planning for the year of Jubilee 2007. Africa was a place I wanted to go and had dreamed about going because my dad had traveled to Africa and a number of places actually in Africa and then I was working early in life and met some African sisters and they were from Ghana and they gave me a Ghanaian name. So my desire really to go to Africa was to go to Ghana. But the Lord worked out on my behalf and in my behalf this year that the first place that I would arrive on the continent of Africa was Kisumu, Kenya. It was so moving to arrive on that continent on that soil that just having to talk about arriving there uh, moved me to tears uh, to be speechless at one point and once I gathered myself I realized that this place was a place that God intended for me to be years before I even arrived there and when I had the opportunity of walking through and visiting with just looking at Kisumu, Kenya and the city, the township, the country, I realized that there was so much of a great need there that I personally could not impact. But I realized that in covenant with others and, and with God, that he had something that he wanted us to do there in Kisumu, Kenya. When I looked at the needs, they were great. Um, as a nurse, my background is, is a registered nurse, I was overwhelmed by the lack of health care 
uh, facilities that they had and just healthcare in general. Um, that there, I was disheartened of uh, all the sickness that I saw around me, the lack of cleanliness uh, that I saw. But then I was lifted from that picture because I saw God in all of the faces of the individuals that were there in Kisumu, Kenya. I was able to talk to individuals that basically connected with God's spirit and said, you know, we prayed, we prayed, and you are an answer to our prayer. And we now know that God sees, he hears, and that he cares about us because you're here and you're an answer to prayer. And when I heard those words, I was able to see the resilience in the faces of the people there. They had hopes and they had dreams and they believed in God and they prayed. And they prayed to a God that will allow people to travel from the United States miles and miles away to be able to come and answer their prayer and validate for them and affirm them that God sees and knows and hears them. What it did for me that whole time that I spent in Kenya just traveling from either orphanages or to um, the hospital that was there locally or even into the township and looking at orphans who are living on the street and, and people who are without homes, they're homeless, they're shelterless. What it did for me was had me just sit back and go through my own mind, my own spirit. My trip to Kenya was somewhat of a second chance because some years ago my husband went to Africa, went to Nigeria, and uh, I was supposed to go with him. But mothers always thinking about children. So because of the children, I did not make the trip. Sometimes in life, we do not get a second chance. And so Ken, going to Kenya was a second chance for me to go to Africa. The trip was long, but it was a rewarding trip. And when we got to Kenya, it was somewhat a positive feelings for me to know that I'm on the African soil that I missed some years ago. Entering there, you have a good feeling. The people were nice. At the airport, everybody was nice. They were friendly and everything. We had to travel further to get to where we were going. And where we stayed first, it was okay. And then when we left for our other trip, it was a little rough, but in life we have to go through rough times in order to accomplish things that we have to accomplish or we'd like to accomplish. And so we traveled over to Kenya. When we got there, the folk received us so well. They took us into their homes and they took care of us. And they were so happy that we spent so many hours traveling just to come to Kenya to be with them. One of the reasons we really went there was to be part of the crusade that they were having. And uh, God continues to bless his work, bless his man servants, his ministers, and all those who planning or practicing or helping to take care of others. We got there and um, after we went to some of the meetings, I saw how happy those people were. They were praising God. They were singing. And this made me feel so well because I'm accustomed to being in crusades and for having such enjoyment praising God. One of my, the things that really came to me and is part of me, children. And so the Sabbath morning when after they had part Sabbath school, I went over to the children's division. And there was the church, just the roof, 
no sides to the church. They had no benches like we would have, but they had some posts and then they had some planks on top of the post and that's what the kids were sitting on. And they were so happy and enjoyed the service. They were singing and praising God. I sat there and it went through my mind how oh God can do great things even in the lives of those children that were going through so many difficult times. They looked so happy. They were praising God. They were singing the songs that we could sing also. And then the story hour went on and they were so quiet. They responded, they answered, they listened, and then after that, they were ready to do some other things in Sabbath school. I noticed within there, the children came on time. They were on time for Sabbath school. They were nicely dressed as they could, and they came and they sat. They were coming, coming, coming. I decided I would count them. And so I counted, and there were over 150 children and juniors that were over there in Sabbath school. That's an enormous amount of children, just the children by themselves, without teachers. And while I was there also, we had some pathfinders. And pathfinders is a part of me also, because all my life I have been with children working with children. The experience there was, was something awesome to see how God can use us to go there to revive and revitalize their lives and to give them hope and to bring comfort to them. In Kenya, there are many things that we have seen and we have heard. We have seen a church that needs to be completed, no sides. But God is using it for those lives. And uh, we also see where we can help. And as we move on, we are able to ask others to help. Another thing that I really observe was the time when we um, went to visit the, uh, the children at the orphanage. Oh, that was something else. But they too were able to come true. The thing that really struck me was the orphanage for the widows. That I've never heard before. And I was able to talk both to the children and to the widows. And when I spoke to the widows, you know, I made them, I certain them that I too was a widow because I lost my husband just about a year ago. When I said I'm a widow, they opened their eyes wide. I said, yes, I'm a widow. But we have to take into consideration that their lifestyle and our lifestyle is different. And so even though I'm a widow, there are lots of things that I can do that they cannot do because of their culture. But God is an awesome God. The trip to Kenya was well deserving. And God is going to do some great things for those people because He has already started. And whatever He starts, He will come to. So we are to continue to trust Him talk to our friends, our loved ones, and let them know the need for help in Kenya. And I am sure that they will be willing to help. Because God said, ask, and you will receive. And we are going to be able to help them in the future. That's my testimony about Kenya.